being a professional and being a businessman with a very professional sense about him means that this business professional also has to have a certain etiquette when it comes to correspondence. And when I'm talking about correspondence in this particular item here, I mean invitations that come your way or business letters. We do get a lot of rubbish, we can say, in the mail. A lot of it is junk mail, just like you get junk email. But when you're going through your letters, and people still do send letters, people do send invitations as well, and notifications by mail. When you're going through your correspondence, take time to really look at it and respond appropriately. For example, we can say that every invitation that is sent to you, you should give it a response. You should reply to it, even if you're not going to go. If an invitation, however, is uh, some company for soliciting for money, for example, or donations, well, those kinds of things are different. You wouldn't really uh, handle those. It's up for that company to follow up with you. So if you do get an invitation for something, and when you read it, and look at the date of that uh, event or function, then you would appropriately respond. Um, normally, you need to respond within a week of any kind of written invitation, or indeed any kind of written correspondence. And follow things closely as to how to respond. It is a matter of reading things. Sometimes we get things in the mail and we glance at them. We don't really sit and read them intently. So do make sure that you read the details, you read the fine point. Follow any special instructions that there are. And this uh, is particularly concerning any invitation that you are sent. There is a dress code that's given and it's not always the first thing that you read. So look for that. Look for the RSVP, the time within which you must respond, and look for all the other details. Other details including whether you can bring somebody. If you can't see that and if you don't know, then you will inquire about that to uh, the person who has invited you. Another very good thing about correspondence etiquette, and this really shows, conveys your professionalism. Please do try to send thank you letters. If you have attended something and you had a very good time, and it meant that your relationships with that particular customer, for example, had improved very, very much so, then it would be good if you sent a short thank you letter for that event. These can be found. You don't have to spend hours writing a letter. It's not going to take too much time out of your schedule. But have several uh, envelopes and several short thank you, thank you notes already printed. It could be printed with your company logo, for example, uh, just to send off and sign with a very short one-liner to the person who invited you to that particular function. This will really enhance your image in the eyes of your customer or your business partners. I guarantee it. When this happens, people really remember you. It becomes part of your particular signature, so to speak. And it is very impressive. So if, the, if you want to impress people and you want to uh, become very professional in the way you handle your, your uh, business partners, send them a thank you note after any function that they have hosted for you. If indeed you are sending back to your business partners as well any written documents that they sent for you to read or sent for you to sign or, or to view, etc., and they must go back to them, send a cover letter on top of that. Don't just put them in an envelope and tell your secretary to send them on their way. You do need to just sign off a handwritten cover letter or have a cover letter just typed quickly by your secretary and sign it personally. This kind of etiquette, this kind of professional behavior really has a powerful impact and it 
is of a very high level. Points to remember, simple things to do, and it's up to you to decide whether you're going to utilize these techniques or do these in your uh, etiquette toolkit. I would, I think they're a great thing to do, and it means that you are totally professional in the way that you regard your business partners. We're going to take a look here now at email etiquette. And later on in our programs, we are going to be doing email etiquette in a lot of detail because emails are the way that we are corresponding more and more every day. Our lives have been turned around. The way we do business has been turned right around because of the internet and because of emailing. So I'm just going to touch on several main points here about email and we will follow it up with more in-depth discussion on email later on. So let's take a look at email. Here we have the word E-M-A-I-L. So first up, and my first point is, email only those people to whom your message is actually referring to. Don't send mass or chain letters. It really is important that you keep personalized emails as a priority. Email is very tricky, and if, it's, if you're not careful, a lot of people can read what you're talking about, people who really are not relevant to the situation. So don't add on lots of people to your email address list. Next up, M is for make a point of responding to messages promptly. It's a very funny thing that email, because it's so instant, it means that people re re expect a reply instantly. I know that you might be busy, perhaps you're out of your office, etc. So what, wherever you are, if you're out of your office, of course, there are out of office systems that can respond for you. But if you are there and you get emails, try to make it a rule that you send some kind of reply promptly. If you can't attend to the full details of that reply, just send a quick one-liner, but make it prompt, saying, I will get back to you later on. Uh, this is an important thing that you put in your toolkit as to how you handle emails. Next up, A is for always spell check and grammar check before sending messages. And be brief and be clear. There's nothing worse than receiving a message that's got mistakes all over it. It means that you haven't really considered the other person, actually. You haven't been careful. In the I part of email, include your telephone number in your message. You know, it's always good to be able to speak on the phone. And if you need that person to be able to get back to you about something and use a the telephone, then give them that contact point. Give them that information. And L is, learn that email should be used for business rather than personal use in the business environment. When you're at the office, emails are meant to be business-like. Don't send anything in an email that you wouldn't send or see in public. So remember that. Once it's written, once it's gone, anybody can view it. You have to be careful as to the way you construct all the things in your email message. So basically these are just some general rules to follow about email. And as I said, we will be looking at how to master emails later on in a separate session of our program. Telephone manners are also very important when you want to be professional, when you need people to see that you have a business sense about you. So regardless of whether the phone is ringing and you don't know whether it's an internal call or an external call. You always answer the phone with your name and your company. If your system allows you to know whether it's internal, that is fine. But otherwise, you have no idea. And therefore, you have to answer it in a courteous way that, that conveys your professionalism. If you pick up the phone and say, hello, then that is no good. That is a no-no. That is not professional etiquette. When you are placing a call and making a call, always say who you are and where you're from 
immediately when the phone is answered by someone. You could say, uh, good morning, this is Christina Dodd. I'm calling you from ATA Life Coach. That's the way to open a conversation that way. So that lets people see that you are professional. Something else? Speak clearly. This is something we all know, but not something we all do. Always speak clearly into the telephone. People gain a sense of your business approach by the way that you speak. State the purpose of your call as well. Let the person know right up in the beginning what the purpose is for your call, why you are wanting to speak to them. And I know that it's very easy to slip in and use speakerphones. It's great to use speakerphones, and some people like using speakerphones, but remember, uh, speakerphones, when they're used, everybody can hear. So depending on where you are, what uh, situation you are in, uh, the subject matter of your phone call, be careful about using speakerphones. Speakerphones are, however, great for conference calls. And that's, that's the great way that we can have a conference with several people, through using speakerphones. It may seem strange to you when I say the next thing. Always smile when using the phone. You might think, well, there's nobody there to smile to. Well, that is very wrong. There is somebody at the other end of the line. And do you know something? They can actually sense your smile through the way that you're speaking to them and what you're saying. So remember that. Your smile comes through that line. With the tone of voice, with the way that you're speaking, people can detect that. A couple of rules to follow as well. Say please and thank you. Good manners, good courtesy go a long way on a telephone. And that's because you're not actually face to face with that person. So do say please and do say thank you where it is warranted. I know too that sometimes people tend to start to have small talk on the phone before they begin the business talk. But do be very careful. It could be that the person on the other end doesn't really want to have small talk. And you can sense this. If you start to uh, say things that are casual, suddenly you will get a sense that the person on the other end doesn't really want to be casual. So judge your audience. Try to get a feel for that uh, by listening to the tone of their voice, etc. before you begin. And the final thing that I can tell you about telephone manners, which will always bring you great rewards and will always win every time, is if you say that you're going to return calls, then please do return calls to people who called you. That is a true mark of professional business etiquette using a telephone. Just as we went through sending personal thank you notes in the last session, then also returning the call as you said you would do is equally as important and equally as powerful in good business etiquette. So if you follow these simple rules, they're simple, they're not difficult. If you follow them, then you will enhance the way people view you. You will enhance your business image. We all today have a mobile telephone. Everybody more or less has a mobile telephone who is doing business. And we also have voicemail on our phones. Some people do use voicemail, although I have come across a lot of people who don't. But voicemail can be very effective as well in conveying a very proper business-like image. So when you are dealing in business and you have mobile phones with you, always realize that there is a proper way of using mobile phones in business. There is etiquette to follow when you have a mobile telephone. And one of the most important things you can learn how to do is to make sure that you leave a proper voicemail message when you actually leave one. Listen carefully and also know what to say and to follow the instructions that are on that other person's 
message system. Sometimes people get a bit of a shock when they can't get through to someone and the message system comes up asking you to leave a message. I've known people who are not prepared and then they just hang up. Or I've also known people who are caught unaware and they don't have information ready and so they say all the wrong things and it comes out sounding terrible. It sounds like they're a schoolgirl trying to say something to someone. So what I suggest is you get used to the kinds of systems that are on people's telephones and practice it, script it, memorize it as to what you need to leave in your message. This comes with just a little bit of simple practice. Listen carefully to the instructions and have some pen and paper nearby you so you can write down the brief things that you want to leave on that voicemail message system. If you talk for too long, you'll get cut off. Your message will not be full and therefore, actually, the uh, customer that you're trying to call, perhaps, will not even return your call. They'll think, oh, you don't even know how to leave a message? So all of this goes to shaping the image that you want to convey to your customers or the people you are calling. The other thing too about voicemail messages is to check your messages frequently on a daily basis if you are doing business and people call you and leave messages. Don't let them linger. Once you see the symbol come up then please do check those messages. There could be important pieces of information in there for you to follow up on. Some protocol about mobile phones and their general use. And the thing is, this day and age, mobile phones, to be honest, are becoming a bit of a pest, a bit of a nuisance in some places. In restaurants or movie theatres or at your church, if you go off to church, or meetings, particularly meetings, we we're talking about business, then try to avoid focusing and concentrating on the mobile phone as the main focal point of that meeting, for example. There are places and times to use mobile phones. And therefore, in a meeting situation, show respect to the person holding that meeting and to the other people there by either putting your phone on silent or even turning it off, depending on the length of the meeting. And can I also add here, when you put your phone on silent, if you feel it vibrate, for example, or you see it light up, uh, it's important that you don't acknowledge those things, if you can. The main idea here would be to put the phone away, so you're not really going to look at it every time it lights up or every time it might vibrate. That is very disconcerting to the meeting and the other people there. Unless you have something specific or urgent that's going to come up during the time of that meeting, I would really suggest you to ignore the phone. Leave it uh, at your desk if it's an office meeting, or just leave it in your pocket and don't pay any attention to it. If, of course, there is something urgent coming, uh, a call from an international client that you may need to attend to, then Maybe you can highlight that and tell the uh, chairman of the meeting that you might have to take a call if that one comes up, but only that particular call. So there are ways that you can find to use your mobile telephone and to use it with a prof proper air of professionalism. Another thing about mobile telephones is to limit your conversation when in close quarters. That means when you've got lots of people around you, they can hear everything you're saying on the phone. This really amazes me about people. Mobile telephones, if you're around other people, you're not going to have a private conversation. You're not going to have a confidential conversation because people close to you can hear everything. So you really, really do need to remember where you are when your phone rings, whether you can go to a quiet place, a private place, to continue that call or not. Another thing about mobile telephones is really don't use them when you're driving. And this is actually quite uh, sensible, quite common sense, and it's the law in many, many countries. But bear in mind this point. If you are working with 
a customer. Perhaps you are indeed uh, having lunch and you've just come away from lunch and you get into your cars together and you drive and you use your phone, then your customer or your business partner may look at you and they may make a note of that, that you are using your phone while you're driving. Perhaps uh, it's something that they might think is not a good thing to do. So here you have it. There are certain uh, rules to follow using mobile phones that will enhance your etiquette, enhance your professionalism amongst your colleagues, amongst your partners, and indeed amongst all kinds of customers that you have. Another point to being professional is the way you conduct yourself in your office. Office etiquette is very, very important these days. This is the way you handle yourself, your manners and the way you behave amongst your co-workers and your peers and your bosses. So the main thing you can do about being very good at office etiquette is to be totally self-aware and use common sense. You know yourself what is a good thing to do and what is a bad thing to do. So your behavior is going to be reflected and people will remember you purely because of the way you behave in an office. Whether you are disruptive, whether you are noisy, whether you uh, are distracting, whether you slam doors, whether you uh, thump your fists on the table. People are aware of all these things. So do use common sense and be aware of your behaviors. And really in offices, it is an important thing to mind your own business. Don't be a real busybody. Don't try to get to know everybody else's business. It depends when you have good friends who you work with. That's a different thing. But as a general rule, if you are working with international teams, for example, who have come to your country for a period of three months or six months, and you are working in the office with them, then really don't become a busybody about their personal matters. Try to mind your own business and not get too intrusive into the business of others. In some ways too, it's important that you remember never to go over your supervisor's head. There are certain protocols to follow. There are things that you need to do to make sure that people are not angry that you didn't talk to them first that you didn't uh, regard them and you didn't ask them for advice first. So the thing is that you do try to follow the proper lines of protocol. Also, if your company has a certain dress code that they like you to follow, and some companies indeed do this, they do stipulate that you can't wear jeans, for example, to the office, or maybe you can only wear jeans on a Friday to the office. If your company has those codes, then it's important that you follow uh, those particular codes. It's part of the office etiquette. It shows that you are complying and you're part of the corporate culture. And it means that you have good etiquette, good office sense. Another thing when you're amongst your colleagues and your co-workers is to treat everybody with the same respect. As a manager, this is a very important thing that you do anyway, but don't forget it. Quite often we are too caught up in the nature of business and getting things done and we have a lot of pressure, but you do need to treat everybody with the same respect. That goes also for people who perhaps prepare coffee and tea breaks people who come around and uh, deliver mail, people who take correspondence from one department to the next floor up. This goes for everybody who works in your office situation. And therefore, giving them respect is a mark of your professionalism. If indeed you are at a client's building and you're having a meeting in their offices, then it's always nice to say thank you very much to the staff who bring you your coffee or your tea uh, as you are preparing for that meeting. That shows professionalism. And also your client will notice that behavior in you and they will think, 
wow, that's actually quite nice. Their image of you will be enhanced. Their image of you will also be enhanced. And they will think that it's a very professional thing that you've done, actually. A very nice thing to say thank you to those staff who are support staff. So no matter what your job is or your job title, always hold yourself in a very good way. Be very proud of who you are. This is great in the office. Always uh, be aware of the fact that you have good qualities and you are an important part of the team or important part of the department. And when this happens, your behaviour becomes quite a confident behaviour. This is good behaviour to show in a situation, in an office, in a work environment. And therefore, it enhances the image that you are able to portray. No matter what rank you are, no matter what level you are, never put yourself down. You are, too, a very important part of the office and the workplace. I would now like to move along to meeting etiquette. And this area is always something where you can demonstrate how professional you are. You have meetings, of course, internally, and you have meetings externally. And meeting with customers or potential business partners is a chance for you to be able to show how professional you are, as I said. So at a meeting, some things that can help you be professional are to have a calendar ready notebook and pen. Always have this available, particularly the calendar, because quite often you are talking about the next meeting or the next thing to be done, the action items of the meeting, etc. So if you go in without these things, you really do look unprofessional. Sometimes I have seen people come into meetings without anything in their hands and I look at them in amazement and think, well, what are you doing here? How are you going to remember what we're going through? How are you going to take notes? So it makes me wonder about that person. Were they prepared? Are they really willing to be in this meeting, etc.? So always make sure you are ready with these simple things. It's not rocket science to have these things ready. Meeting etiquette also involves you never bringing up personal problems or issues in a professional situation. It may, come, it may be that you're talking with customers, but when you're talking with your professional counterparts, there's no real place to talk about personal things. Of course, this depends on the level of your relationships, but generally, as a rule, do not bring up personal problems or issues at these types of situations. Remember, your image is important. If you are particularly unhappy with the way things are done in your organisation and you're just unhappy and you want to complain about it because that's what you want to do, then don't do that. If you feel that there are things that you want to change in your workplace, you're not happy. And when you come to your customer, they say, is everything all right where things are where, at your office? And you say, no, I had somebody do this and I'm really annoyed at it and da da Don't go on about it. Just ignore it. Just say, well, yes, there are things that are going on, but uh, let's get on with the, the subject that we are here to discuss today, shall we? That's what you can do. So don't bring up your own personal issues. This is not the forum. Avoid you talk. Avoid talks about you. Try to think about the customer and what the subject matter is and stay on schedule. In meetings, it's important that the, the schedule is adhered to and the time doesn't go over unduly. So do bear in mind that everybody's time is important and you will look quite professional if you do consider this and consider the other party. If things are getting long in the discussion, then you can say, well, we don't want to uh, waste your valuable time too much, so shall we try to bring the discussion back to the centre of things uh, so we don't go over time? That will enhance your image in the eyes of the other party, of your business partner. Also, one other point in meeting et etiquette. 
particularly when it comes to large meetings. Wait until all of the uh, people in senior positions or major power have taken their seats first. This is very good etiquette. As I said before, when senior people come to a meeting and you stand up and uh, welcome them, that is very good etiquette. Also in conferences where the other party, which may include quite a few people, and they are the major power player in the negotiation, for example, when they enter the room, uh, wait back until they have taken their seats. The ends of tables and the middle parts of tables are power seats, as you well know. So do wait until people have taken their seats and this shows that you are considering them, that you are really aware of the professionalism that is important in addressing them and welcoming them to the meeting. Now we come to etiquette as you travel abroad. Indeed, you have customers here inside your home country where you are doing business. And also there may come the opportunity where you have to go overseas and you do have to meet people of all different cultures. So that means that you have to know the various cultural backgrounds of the particular country that you are visiting. That may be a difficult task because you may be visiting lots of countries around the world. However, you do have to be open to beginning to understand the differences that happen between different cultures. We have certainly gone through this in a previous part of our program and it would pay for you to look at those parts of that program quite uh, thoroughly if they refer to you in terms of the countries. Generally, I'm going to say here, in a general way, that you do need to study up. And problem solving on issues of protocol and how things are done in different countries differs from one country to the next, as you well know. In this particular session, we're going to look through things in a general way so you can get a touch and a feel for these things. Then it's up to you to follow in more detail uh, depending on the country that you visit or the partners and where they come from. Usually, we have to bear in mind several things about the other person. We have to look at their age as to how we approach them, as to how we behave. We need to look at their race, their ethnicity, their culture, their gender, their sexual orientation, which is important, their marital status, physical status, uh, their economic class, education, religion, and political ideology. We have to be mindful of these things when we're visiting other countries, when we're dealing with people from other cultures. So please open your mind up to these things and start to be mindful of them and become aware. There are great benefits to being aware of other cultures, to being uh, in tune with the way things are done in other cultures. People will respect you for the fact that you have understood the way that they do things. People will be happy that you are actually trying to understand, for example, the way things are done here in France, or for the example, the way things are done here in Vietnam people will begin to admire that and see that that is a mark of being professional and businesslike. You will find that there is less conflict and that problems will be solved more easily when you are a little bit more sensitive to the way people behave depending on their cultures. Business becomes much more successful and there is more meaning to job security. So there can only be pluses when it comes to being culturally sensitive of your potential partners and potential customers. I'd like to say that this brings us to the close of our session on business etiquette and being professional. 
all the subjects that we have covered in this session are going to give you more insights into how to meet and greet people, how to shake the hands of other people, how to behave in meetings, how to deal with correspondence, the ways that you should conduct yourself when you have those important luncheon meetings and those important dinner meetings as well, how you actually network and communicate professionally when you go to cocktail parties or receptions, for example, and also how when you're working with emails and your telephones, how you can convey a very professional image to others around you. Indeed, when you're dealing with your partners and potential business people and clients who are from other cultures, there's also sensitivities that you have to be aware of as well. So being culturally sensitive is going to mean that your business, and particularly because you may be dealing with international partners, this is going to help you have a great professional image. Your etiquette abroad when you're dealing with people, your etiquette when your international partners come here, certainly is going to have an impact on what they think of you and as to whether they want to continue doing business with you or not. It will contribute to that factor. So I do hope that you take the pointers that we've highlighted here in this session and begin to apply them. Begin to use them in your daily work routines or when you're taking that next business trip abroad to visit your partners. Thank you very much for the time that you have given in following me through this session. And I look forward to seeing you in our next program.